Hi guys, uh, back with another video and today we're going to be looking at something that a few people have been in touch with us about uh, and that is how to manipulate VAMAS blocks within CASA. Um, so there's some ways that you can copy and paste, move things around in CASA which may not always be uh, the most obvious uh, to you as you come into the software, learning how to use the software. So we're just going to go through some of those um, and hopefully help you to get more uh, to grips with the software and understand how you can move around your data and kind of organize things so it makes sense to you. So I'm just going to switch over to CASA now. Um, so we've just got a, a polymer spectrum here and the first thing we're going to do is to just do a very quick casual calibration roughly to where we want our carbon to sit. So there we're going to just send it to about 284.8 and uh, now we have a series of blocks which have been calibrated and if we go into our uh, processing history we can see here the calibration has been applied. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, the copy and paste function in CASA. Um, you may notice up here there is a copy and paste function. This doesn't necessarily work in the same way that you might assume is in you click once to copy, you click twice to paste somewhere else. Uh, what this does uh, is whatever is currently highlighted here it will simultaneously copy and paste to the currently open kind of uh, iteration of uh, the, the processing window so for example if we click here with this window open we're going to bring up this copy selected VAMAS blocks window and then we can just click OK and that's going to copy it directly into this window because this is what we have currently open if we were to say for example move to a new uh, iteration of the processing window. Now I'm going to highlight uh, the carbon again and then switch to the second uh, window and click the copy paste function. We've then moved this to a, a completely new window, a new data set. So if you're working on multiple data sets, you want to move things around from one to another. Uh, you just need to make sure that you have both windows open that you want to copy and paste. So let's start this again from uh, the beginning. We go to a new window. I'm just going to minimize this so that it's uh, easier to see. I'm going to copy the blocks we want. So this time, for example, I'll copy the carbon, the oxygen, and the fluorine. And then we're just going to fill on paste. And uh, there we have them in a new uh, window. So if we want to copy and add new data sets, so for example, let's open up a different polymer. Say we want to combine these two polymers into a new document or a new window. We take the first one, and we're going to do a copy paste, and then we're going to come back to our, the original one we had open, and we will copy paste this as well. And now we have both of these spectral sets uh, within the same document. You can also do something very similar um, with the open and merge function. So, for example, we want to uh, combine these two polymers, we can just select these in the merge VAMAS blocks. Um, for some reason it's giving me an error there, but uh, essentially <laughs> they're in the same um, folder uh, and now we've got uh, these two data sets within the same window. Uh, what you may have noticed, let me just close, go back to the original um, spectral we are working with. What you will notice when you open the copy and paste is there's an option for the processed data only. So we copy this once. Let's copy this again and this time tick the process data only. So what this will do, if we have a look at these overlaid you'll see straight away that they are the same thing. However if we go back into the processing window the original uh, block that we copied with without ticking process data only still has this processing history attached to it because it's essentially copying the raw data and then applying whatever processing it had uh, on that block. The second one we've copied with the processing history has no um, with the process data only so it has no processing history. So for example if we come to our first one and just reset processing history and then we copy them we can see we have this shifted spectrum 
because we have uh, one where we copied across all the properties from the calibration and one where we copied without. Um, so there's useful things you can do with both. It really depends on what your needs are, but it's important to know that there is that option. One other way that you can copy blocks is uh, quite a useful tool. If you go into Spectrum Processing and then in the PCA window, there is an option here called Save Processed Copy. And what that does, if we copy this across, is it copies it to a, a new block. So for example, if you're working with a large data set and you've got lots and lots of um, different samples in here, this will then attach this block as a, a kind of a separate um, separate orbital, separate species. Uh, it will just put an incremental number on the end of it um, so that it will align with whatever the name is of the sample. So if here we've got ooh, lots of samples the same, but for example if we use our open and merge and let's just select uh, a few samples to open and we've got our sample name up there and let's say we want to copy this block make a copy that we can do a kind of separate processing on but we want to keep it aligned with uh, the sample identifier we go into PCA save a processed copy and then that will attach a, a new column and associate it with the sample name uh, so in this case polyvinyl trifluoracetate uh, and we can say it's exactly the same uh, but it means you could do multiple iterations of, uh, of a processing model test out a few different things without having to kind of delete previous uh, attempts and you can easily overlay and compare uh, what your models have, have been um, doing describing and see which one really fits your data um, nicely so whilst we're on the topic of uh, these multiple blocks and um, the, the different names that CAS has given it, another very useful function is up here where we can edit the sample ID. Uh, so as I said, this will just attach an integer when we do this save process copy on the end of the transition. And that is what essentially gives it a new column. If we were to come into this um, edit sample ID option say we want to move this column back to the uh, C1S column uh, so it's similar to when we did the other copy paste function we can have things uh, arranged in a column view we're just going to rename this transition um, so it says C1S so it's the same as this um, central column here C1S just apply that and that then moves this uh, over here uh, so of course if you do make copies in, in a column and you want to move them to a second iteration you can come down here and edit that as well uh, you can name this whatever you want so if you say uh, you want to name this fit one you can put in a one model here create another one call it fit two however you want to kind of name your uh, your samples and name your fits and that will just help you keep track of exactly what you've done to each different spectrum uh, and allow you to uh, really organize well uh, all of the uh, all of the data in your uh, VAMAS file. Um, this is also quite useful if uh, you want to rename anything. So if you've got uh, a sample name here, so let's just, I'm just going to delete the one we've just created. So up here we have this delete VAMAS block again, whatever is currently highlighted it will delete. Um, we're working uh, in the edit mode where we have sample identifier. When you open up to start with you may see something that looks like this. We have a uh, data set option and 0, 1 etc. Uh, so we can use the edit mode to toggle sample name on and off. Um, but let's just say we want to change the sample name of this. If we highlight everything here, all the blocks associated to this sample, click on the edit sample ID and then I'm just going to remove sample name so it just says the name of the polymer instead. What we want to make sure we're doing this time because we are modifying multiple different blocks and these have all got different transitions and block IDs we're going to 
unselect the options for update block ID, sample ID, species element and transition. So we're just going to be updating the sample ID here. So if we then apply that, we can now see our new name just says the name of the polymer. And again, very useful if you want to uh, work on data sets where maybe the, the sample name is wrong or maybe the sample name is missing, you want to add it in. You can do that with this um, edit sample ID block. So that's all um, for this video. Hope you found that useful. Uh, if there's anything else you want to see in terms of uh, organization or manipulation of CASA blocks, do let us know in the comments. Uh, but otherwise, have a great day and we'll see you soon for some more videos. Thank you.